Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Movie Collection Spotlight. Today we're going to be not taking a look at a specific filmmaker in my collection, but we're going to be taking a look at a specific actor. An actor who I have quite a few films from, and the reason why we will be discussing him today is because it, it was recently his 100th birthday on April 1st, and this is the great Tashiro Mifune. Tashiro Mifune was born on April 1st, 1920. Unfortunately, he is not around with us to celebrate that, but we will celebrate him in memoriam because he is that significant a figure that I think he's definitely worth celebrating. And Toshiro Mifune, for me, is someone who I knew about before I actually saw him in any of the films that he was in. Toshiro Mifune has an 185 credits as an actor to his name, according to IMDb. He's, of course, most synonymous with the Samurai film, or he's actually most synonymous with his work and collaboration with Akira Kurosawa, the great Japanese and all-time filmmaker. So you're going to see a lot of that collaboration here in my collection. They were a legendary collaboration, and they really brought out the best in one another when it came to just the legacies of both of their careers. First up here, I have is the uh, Criterion Collection Eclipse Series 7, which is post-war Kurosawa. And the reason why I bring that up is because three of these films have Toshiro Mifune in them. And the three that have him in them are Scandal, The Idiot, and I Live in Fear. So as with most Eclipse Series set, it's kind of a slipcover here, and you get these thin packs. And the Eclipse Series for uh, Criterion is kind of like they're um, less frills, more basic, you know, bare bones types of releases. But what's amazing about them is pretty much the films that are in them are really only going to be seen in these sets. They don't really get wide distribution or wide acclaim. They're only available on DVD, which I guess is unfortunate for some who really want the HD quality. And a lot of these films are really hidden gems. The first one here is Scandal. All of the thin packs in these sets have their own individual artwork on the front as well as in the back as well as in the inside which we'll be taking a look at but here's the front which is a, a still from the movie and on the back you get all of the criterion usual details and here you can see all the details description of the film usual tech specs here on the side and a list of the cast which is kind of nice actually it really kind of saves you from going to imdb but opening it up here on the inside you get just the disc as well as a rather long essay of the movie and which is really nice it kind of is the same thing they would put in a booklet, but they kind of just save space and money by putting it on the inner artwork, which I guess serves the same purpose. But as you can see, no real frills when it comes to the, the discard at all. Next up here is The Idiot, another still here on the cover, and of course the details here on the back. Same as the other one with a nice essay here on the inner artwork and there's the, the regular disc art there. And lastly in this set is I Live in Fear. Here is the cover. Here is the back. Sorry for the glare. That's kind of the problem with these clear plastic cases. And then here is the inside. Now, the reason why I haven't talked about these films in any great depth right now is because I've only seen Scandal. I haven't seen the other two. Next up here, we have one of the all-time great Akira Kurosawa films. This film is probably shown in every film school on the planet. This is a highly recommended film, and that is just the fantastic masterpiece, Rashomon. This is the Blu-ray re-release cover that they did a few years ago. Um, this is honestly probably where many people should start their journey into Akira Kurosawa's work. Um, as well as, I would say, Toshiro Mifune as well. They did do earlier work together, and I've seen a couple of those films. Specifically, Drunken Angel as well as Stray Dog are two of the earlier works I've seen from Kurosawa as well as Toshiro Mifune. The reason why I don't have them is because they're only available on DVD, and I'm hoping Criterion will re-release those on Blu-ray someday soon. So here's the cover art, which you've seen enough of. And then here we go on the back, where we get the usual Criterion Collection stuff. 
And also the reason why I didn't read off any of the special features of the Eclipse series set films is because they come with no special features. But this is, of course, much different. This is, you know, a quote-unquote official release from Criterion. So here's another look at the back, and let me just read off these very quickly. Uh, you have a new digital restoration with uncompressed monaural soundtrack, audio commentary by Japanese film historian Donald Ritchie, interview with director Robert Altman about Rashomon, that is very fantastic, excerpts from the world of Kazuya Miyagawa, a documentary on Rashomon's cinematographer, a testimony as an image, a 68-minute documentary featuring interviews with cast and crew, and then we have an archival audio interview with Takashi Shimura, who is another amazing Japanese actor who collaborated with uh, Akira Kurosawa a lot. Original and re-released trailers, plus a booklet featuring an essay by film historian Stephen Prince, an excerpt from director Akira Kurosawa, something like an autobiography and reprints of Rashomon's two source stories by Ryunosuke Akutagawa, Rashomon and In a Grove. So let's take a look on the inside. Here you have uh, disc artwork as well as the booklet. Taking a closer look at the booklet here, you can see it's actually rather thick and it does have, has some heft to it. As you can see, you get all these pages of material in here. You, they really shelled out a lot for this booklet. And there's title of the film on the back. And inside as well, there's, there's something. They have a chapters listing, which they kind of really don't need, but I guess it's nice to add that little detail. Moving on now to literally one of my favorite films ever. And this is a titan of a film. And this is another collaboration with Akira Kurosawa. And this is Seven Samurai. When I say that this is a titan of a film, this is one of the most cinematic, amazing films I've ever seen. It is a long film. It is 207 minutes long. But man, it is one hell of a journey. So here you have... Um, the cover art and on the back here you have um, the usual specs from Criterion. I'm sorry if the focus isn't working as well as it should on this but I'll read off all of the special features as I normally do. And this is actually a really important film because it is actually spy number two on the Criterion collection. Let me just get Rashomon to see what spy number that was. Rashomon is spy number 138. So, this is a thicker set, as you can tell here. Also, as you can tell, there's a bit of damage up there. To be honest, this was the only copy that my local Barnes & Noble had during a 50% off sale years ago. And I basically, that's that's how I bought it. We bought it damaged. I know, I, I hate it too. I hate it too. But this slides out in kind of a slip box form. And what you get here is a digipack that also holds the two-disc set as well as a booklet. Here are the two discs. And you get kind of a nice spread here as well. And the booklet here is another thick booklet. I think believe it's thicker than um, the Rashomon booklet. Nice R on the back here. Yeah, this is an all-time film. I cannot recommend this film enough. Toshiro Mafune is incredible in it. Uh, but before we move on to the next one, let me read off all of these special features. First up here is restored high definition digital transfer with the original uncompressed monaural soundtrack and an optimal uncompressed 2.0 surround soundtrack, two audio commentaries, one featuring film scholars David Desser, Joan Mellon, Stephen Prince, Tony Raines, and Donald Ritchie, and other Japanese film expert Michael Jack. That's all on disc one. Now disc two has nothing but supplements obviously. 50-minute documentary on the making of Seven Samurai, created as part of the Toho Masterworks series Akira Kurosawa is wonderful to create. And then we have My Life in Cinema, a two-hour video conversation from 1993 between directors Akira Kurosawa and Nagisa Oshima. Nagisa Oshima is another very well-known Japanese director. His films are 
fantastic. Very different than Akira Kurosawa's films, but also fantastic. And then we have Seven Samurai Origins and Influences, a documentary looking at the samurai traditions and films that helped shape Kurosawa's masterpiece. Theatrical trailers and teaser gallery of rear posters, behind-the-scenes photos and production stills, and then, of course, that gigantic booklet featuring essays by Kenneth Turin, Peter Cowie, Philip Kemp, Peggy Chow, Alain Silver, Stuart Galbraith, Arthur Penn, and Sidley Lumet, an interview with Toshiro Mifune from 1993 as well. So yes, a massive set, an essential piece, I think, to anyone's Criterion collection, if you have your own Criterion collection, or to honestly, to anyone's film collection, this is definitely a must-own. And kind of stepping away from the Akira Kurosawa and Mifune collaboration, we have the Samurai Trilogy by Hiroshi Inagaki. And this is, of course, another Criterion release. You're going to be noticing a pattern with a lot of these videos. Uh, here's the cover art, which I really love the gray and the red. It really meshes well, and it really pops. And these films here are all about the legendary samurai Musashi. Basically, a Musashi trilogy. And it does take a lot of liberties with the real-life Musashi. But uh, look up the real-life Musashi. Very fascinating person. Very influential person when it came to the samurai uh, fighting style and all those kinds of things. I think he was, he, he was known for using two samurai swords. Very, very interesting. But the films that are in this collection are a Samurai 1, Musashi Miyamoto, Samurai 2, Duel at Ichijoji Temple, and the Samurai 3, Duel at Genryu Island. And flipping it around here, we have all of the special feature details. Getting a, a nice close-up of that, if you can read it. Sorry for the glare. But let's take a look at all of the special features. Uh, not many, unfortunately. Um, there's a new high-definition digital restorations of all three films with uncompressed monaural soundtracks, new interviews with translator and historian William Scott Wilson about the real-life Musashi Miyamoto, the inspiration for the hero of the films, trailers, new English subtitle translations, plus a booklet featuring essays by film historian Stephen Prince and Wilson. But opening up here, it is a two-disc set, not a three-disc set. Basically, they put the first two films on one disc and the third film on another disc. Let's take off this disc so we can get a better look at the other disc. Let's take out this booklet so we can get a better look at that as well. So, plain back, nothing there. And there's no inner artwork whatsoever. Just plain black. I do highly recommend getting this. Um, these films are really lots of fun and very entertaining. And the stories I find to be just very engrossing. And they all kind of like play and lead into one another. So they really feel like a conjoined trilogy of movies. But jumping back into the Kurosawa Toshiro Mifune collaboration, we have really one of my favorite films from their collaboration. And I'm biased when I say that because I really love what this film is based on. And this is Throne of Blood. And the reason why I love this so much is because it is a Japanese samurai Akira Kurosawa adaptation of the Shakespearean play Macbeth, which just happens to be my favorite Shakespearean play. And here we are on the back. And what I love about this artwork is you could just see it looks like there's blood dripping all over it, which is a great detail. And for the special features, we have new restored 2K digital film transfer with uncompressed monaural soundtrack on the Blu-ray, audio commentary featuring Japanese film expert Michael Jack, documentary on the making of the film created as part of the Toho Masters series Akira Kurosawa, it is wonderful to create two alternate subtitle translations by Japanese film translator Linda Hoagland and Kurosawa expert Donald Ritchie. Trailer, one Blu-ray and one DVD with content available in both formats. Yes, this came out during the time where Criterion was putting out their dual format editions, which I personally absolutely loved because I really love that we got to get basically these amazing films in both formats, so basically a bigger bank for our buck. But they kind of went away with it after about a year or two or so, because I guess people really weren't, you know, liking it. But I liked it. But this also includes a booklet featuring an essay by film historian Stephen Prince, notes on the subtitling by Hoagland and Ritchie. 
And on the inside here, we have the two discs, the Blu-ray and the DVD, as well as the booklet. Here's a better look at just the DVD. And here's the booklet. And there is actually inner artwork, which is pretty damn awesome, actually. Next up is another Kurosawa Mifune collaboration, and that is Hidden Fortress. Now, Hidden Fortress is mostly well known for being the inspiration for Star Wars. Essentially, most of Kurosawa's work is an inspiration for Star Wars, because basically Star Wars, when it came to the concept of the Jedi, it's samurais in space, for the most part. There is actually a special feature on here that is an interview, you know, directly with George Lucas talking about that. But here's the cover. Here is the back. And this is spy number 116. Let me go back and check out what the other spy numbers are. I messed up on that. So the Samurai Trilogy number is 14, 15, and 16. So you get three numbers there. And Throne of Blood is number 190 in the collection. When it comes to special features, we have new 2K digital restoration with uncompressed monaural soundtrack on the Blu-ray. Alternate 3.0 surround soundtrack preserving the original Prospecta simulated stereo effects presented in DTS HD Master Audio on the Blu-ray. New audio commentary by film historian Stephen Prince, author of The Warrior's Camera, The Cinema of Akira Kurosawa, documentary from 2003 on the making of the film created as part of the Toho Masterworks series Akira Kurosawa, It Is Wonderful to Create, Interview from 2001 with filmmaker George Lucas about Kurosawa. Uh, trailer, new English subtitle translation, one Blu-ray, one DVD with all content available in both formats, plus a booklet featuring an essay by film scholar Catherine Russell. What is interesting about this is it does have that 3.0 audio mix, which is 3.0 is something you don't typically hear. Opening it up, you have both discs with different artwork as well as the booklet. There's a better look at the DVD, and let's take a better look at the booklet, which is a much thinner booklet than the others. Hidden Fortress, and then on the back, also says the Hidden Fortress, but like that. But moving on, we're going to another Kurosawa and Mifune collaboration, and this is The Bad Sleep Well, and this is a DVD because this movie is not available in the Blu-ray format yet. I really hope it will be very, very soon. So here's the cover, and then here we go with the back. And as you can see here, it's a different setup than the typical Criterion Collection setup because this is an older DVD. A lot of these Akira Kurosawa films were put out on DVD in the early 2000s and they have older DVDs, and these Blu-rays were a godsend when it came to just the upgrade in quality as well as extras, but this unfortunately doesn't have many as special features, so let's read these off quickly. A new restored high definition transfer. Unfortunately, it's a DVD, so you're not really getting a high def, you know, presentation. A 33 minute documentary on the making of the Bad Sleep Well. Original theatrical trailer. New and improved English subtitle translation. And then, of course, you get a booklet with new essays by film critic Chuck Stevens and director Michael Almereda. And that's it. Uh, this film is. Uh, 150 minutes long it came out in 1960 and this I think is a hidden gem in the Kurosawa filmography I really love this film I think this film is absolutely fantastic but taking a look on the inside here we have just the DVD as well as the booklet What I really like about this film is that it's a really good revenge story, and I've always gravitated towards revenge stories, so that's kind of, I think, why I like it so much. Um, for those of you curious, this is spy number 319. And the next two films here are in a box set together, so I figured I'll talk about them together because they kind of go hand in hand. And this is both Yojimbo and Sonjuro, which is, of course, another 
Akira Kurosawa and Mifune collaboration. This is an iconic collaboration because this is the iconic character of Yojimbo. Uh, is introduced here. So you can buy these individually. I just happened to buy them in a box set when I bought them. Chronologically, the first film e that came out is Yojimbo. So let's take a look at that first. Here we have Yojimbo. And here we have the backing. I think that's going to be about as good as I can get when it comes to the focusing. But I'll read off all the special features. So when it comes to features, we have restored high definition digital transfer with uncompressed monaural soundtrack, optional DTS master audio perspective 3.0 soundtrack, preserving the original simulated stereo effects, a audio commentary by film historian and Kurosawa scholar Stephen Prince, a 45 minute documentary on the making of Yojimbo created as part of the, you guessed it, the Toho Masterworks series, Akira Kurosawa is wonderful to create featuring Kurosawa actor Tatsuya Nakade, uh, production designer Yoshiro Miraki and longtime Kurosawa collaborator Teruyo Nogami. Theatrical teaser and trailer, stills gallery, behind the scenes photos, plus a booklet featuring an essay by film scholar Alexander Sasansky and comments from Kurosawa and his cast and crew. So let's take a look on the inside. Here you have the disc as well as the booklet. Yeah, this is an awesome, awesome samurai film. If you are familiar with the Dollar Trilogy that was done by Sergio Leone, the Man With No Name Trilogy, a character in film series that was made popular by Clint Eastwood, it is based off of the Yojimbo character. And literally, A Fistful of Dollars, which is the first film in that trilogy, is a remake of Yojimbo. It's, it's pretty much the same plot. So here you have the booklet. front and back and there is no inner artwork whatsoever as you saw kind of kind of plain well designed though and next up we have the accompany film which is the next film and that is Sanjiro here you have the back let's take a look at the special features uh, restored high definition digital transfer with uncompressed monaural soundtrack, optional DTS master audio perspecta 3.0 soundtrack, preserving the original simulated stereo effects, audio commentary by film historian and Kurosawa scholar Stephen Prince, a 35 minute documentary on the making of Sanjiro created as part of the Toho Masterworks series. Akira Kurosawa it is wonderful to create, featuring Kurosawa actor Tatsuya Nakade, production designer Yoshiro Maraki, and longtime Kurosawa collaborator Teruyo Nogami, theatrical teaser and trailer, stills gallery of behind the scenes photos. A booklet featuring an essay by film critic Michael Stagow and comments from Kurosawa, his cast, and crew. You can see there are a lot of similar special features when it comes to this set, and of course the artwork is very similar to Yojimbo. Here's a close-up of the booklet, the back, and that is it for Yojimbo and Sanjiro, but before I go, I want to see what the spine numbers are. Okay, so the spine number for Yojimbo is 52, and the spine number, as you can probably guess it, for Sanjiro is 53. Next up is a later collaboration of to Akira Kurosawa and Shiro Mifune, and this is a non-samurai collaboration, and this is a fantastic, amazing film uh, called High and Low. And this film is kind of a a ransom film. It's a crime film. It's a it's an interesting, fantastic film. I really love it a lot. It's such an interesting film in Akira Kurosawa's filmography, as well as a kind of different film that you used to see from Mifune. Mifune did do a lot of other films that weren't samurai films. I just don't happen to have a lot of them in my collection. And of course, here is the back. And the special features are high definition digital restoration with original four track surround sound presented in DTS HD Master Audio, audio commentary featuring 
Akira Kurosawa scholar Stephen Prince, 37-minute documentary on the making of High and Low, created as part of the Toho Masterwork series, Akira Kurosawa, It Is Wonderful to Create, a rare video interview with actor Toshiro Mifune from 1984, a video interview with actor Sutomo Yamazaki, theatrical trailer and teaser, a booklet featuring an essay by critic Jeffrey O'Brien, an onset account by Japanese film scholar Donald Ritchie. On the inside, we get the, the disc and the booklet. And this booklet is actually quite thick. Yeah, it's a thicker booklet than some of the others we've been seeing recently. Um, essays and usual stuff. So that is high and low, but before we go, the spine number is number 24. And now we've reached uh, towards the end of the video here, and this is a film that is much later in Toshiro Mifune's career. And this came out in 1968, and this is the John Borman film, Hell in the Pacific. And this is an underrated gem of a film. The plot of this film is that... Uh, Lee Marvin and Toshiro Mifune are trapped on an island and they've been trapped there since World War II and in their minds they think that the war isn't over yet so they are still enemies trying to kind of kill one another essentially and yeah it's a cat and mouse game a battle of wills it's absolutely fantastic I always thought Lee Marvin is an underrated actor he is one of my favorites this is put out by Kino Lorber and I was so happy that this got a Blu-ray release because the old DVD was a letterboxed widescreen presentation and it wasn't very good and man I really really dig this film um, here's the front here's the back And for special features, there aren't many here, but we have on-camera interview with director John Borman, interview with art director Anthony Pratt, audio commentary by film historian Travis Crawford and Bill Ackerman. There is an alternate ending as well as a trailer gallery. I think John Borman is an underrated director. He did Deliverance as well as Excalibur. Um, two great films in my opinion. But here you have the Kino Lorber Studio Classics Discs. This is part of their Studio Classics line, um, which is a really fantastic line of movies. If you're really interested in getting a lot of back catalog obscure title films, uh, chances are Kino Lorber Studio Classics is the way to go because they've put out a lot, a lot of stuff lately. And there is a booklet here, but this booklet is actually just a, I believe, a catalog of some of their titles. Yeah, it really is. Like, you've got, you've got, so many great films in there. You've got Robert Altman films. You've got films by Sam Peckinpah. You've got um, films starring, you know, Charles Bronson. Um, you have uh, Marty, which is an amazing, amazing movie. One of my favorites of all time. Go to their website and just check out all their titles. Uh, but what is also interesting here is that there's actually a reversible cover. And I did not know that until I just looked at this. There is an inside reversible cover that just looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to take that out just, just so you can get a better look at it. That's an awesome, awesome cover. Now, here is a bit of a complicated uh, thing here. So please bear with me. Here I have the um, Zadoichi the Blind Swordsman box set from Criterion. And the reason why I bring this out is because... Toshiro Mifune reprised his character of Yojimbo in this series in 1970. So I've got to go in here and I've got to get the disc. But this, as you can tell, is a monster set. This also came out during their run of a dual format edition. So this is a dual format monster set. So look at the artwork on this thing. It's incredible. I'm going to do a full review of this one day when I get through all of the films. I haven't gotten through all of them yet. I think I've gotten through like seven of them. But there are so many films here. There's, There are actually 25 films and that's not even all of the films in the Zatoichi series. There's one towards the end of the series that's not even in this set. But let's get to the one that we need to look at because they going to suit our purposes. Yeah, here we go. It is movie number 20, which is Zatoichi meets Yojimbo. So yeah, let me just hold up this whole thing here. So here is uh, the page. Yeah, the page in which uh, Zatoichi meets Yojimbo is on. It's movie number 20. 
And the way it is structured here is very interesting. So here you've got the disc, which you see, and this is the Blu-ray disc. And this Blu-ray disc has three movies. It has um, S Samaritan Zatoichi, Zatoichi Michio Jimbo, Zatoichi Goes to the Fire Festival. Okay, so there's that. But what is interesting is it folds out here so that you get the DVD counterparts on on here. And you can see that's how they that's how it is. Um, actually, it says DVD right on it, which is really nice. So um, this disc here contains the DVD edition of Zatoichi Meets Yojimbo. Now, the thing is with this set is that there are a lot of special features pertaining to each film. There's basically just three major special features, but what you do get here is this hardcover book. And inside of this hardcover book, you get, first of all, amazing artwork outside of it. But inside of it, each page is dedicated to each individual film. So let's just go to the film that we need to be looking at. And here you have Zatoichi meets Yojimbo. And it has an essay here, as well as all like um, like cast and credits and stuff like that. So that has been, I believe, all of the films I have in my collection of Toshiro Mifune. And I'm really glad I'm able to kind of celebrate his 100th birthday. Granted, I'm kind of a week late when it comes to being able to post this video. So please excuse me on that. If you really are interested in getting into Toshiro Mifune's work, I do highly recommend starting with his work with Akira Kurosawa and progressing from there. Many of his films I don't have in my collection yet. So I'm constantly collecting, constantly getting more of his stuff. So thank you all for watching. And if you like this video please check out the other videos on my channel as well as subscribing.